Hello everyone. Welcome to my messy polytunnel Friday evening in Sweden. Hope all of you have a nice day or evening wherever you are. I have had the most amazing uh, garden day in like weeks or months maybe, I don't know. Finally we have spring in Sweden and it feels like I have never seen spring before. <laughs> We have had such a long winter, so I'm so tired of winter and snow at this point. And now I'm really happy about the warm weather, about the sun and uh, the green things in my polytunnel. The last few days it just exploded actually. And uh, not outdoor in the main kitchen garden, but in the polytunnel. And uh, I've also seen some of the um, uh, the the leak um, I I can't remember the name of it but it's um, um, a, a very uh, s special leak that I grow um, that just showed up and ended up on my um, my evening salad actually <laughs> today I have um, I have um, carried out plenty of plants in my polytunnel because I check the weather up um, each day and I noticed that um, for a few nights um, um, ahead we will have um, um, warm temperatures. It will be like 4 degrees and uh, 8 degrees and it's perfect. And I am so damn tired uh, of having my plants indoors because I have those, you know, the green, um, do you say pests, um, you know, eating on the leaves. Uh, and destroying the plants and I just want to get rid of them but it's really hard uh, indoors when there are many plants so I just want them uh, to to come out here in the polytunnel because here we have um, different things you know flies and um, whatever that could kill them better than me <laughs> so I uh, have carried out some tomatoes um, but most of the tomatoes actually I have sown winter time in very cold and frozen soil. I can show you how it looks because I have been, uh, this is one of the things I have been very happy about today because they are germinating. Let me show you. I grow, this is our house. <laughs> I grow about 60 varieties of tomatoes this year. So I have sort of, I, I sowed I sold them all. <laughs> Why not? So this uh, sowing was made in, sorry, in February, I think. And I have kept them out here in, in the polytunnel. And here you can see, they are growing. I, I sowed three seeds in each cell. So there will be plenty of tomatoes if, if everyone <laughs> will manage to survive. I don't think they will, but yeah. Why I am interested in such an experiment is that um, it, 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 it requires a, a, um, a lot of space indoors to, to keep the sowing and the plants whenever they are transplanted. And I want to use that space for other things. So if I can find a way to make winter sowings of tomatoes that, um, that works out fine. I mean, it's a problem for us in Sweden because our season is quite short. So we, we need to have uh, plants that can grow fast um, and give a harvest before it's too late, basically. So. Um, it, it's, it's, not, um, it's not a problem to grow tomatoes um, after a winter sowing, for example, but the question is, will, will the plants be able to, to give me something to harvest? And if not, that's not a good way to grow tomatoes. I have seen plenty of um, gardeners in like Canada uh, growing tomatoes with winter sowings, making the sowings in uh, like April. And I would say April it is uh, in Sweden is a bit too late to sow um, sow tomatoes, so I don't know if those varieties will end up <laughs> in my beds. Uh, 
with tomatoes on. We'll see. So that's why I also I have made. Um, uh, yeah, Jennifer says that cherry tomatoes might, might grow faster, and that's why I grow uh, plenty of you know the bushy uh, tomato varieties, and also the small cherry tomatoes. And um, there are plenty of varieties. We also have in Sweden very good uh, varieties. You know those um, he heritage varieties, um, heirloom varieties um, that traditionally have been. Um, have been in our gardens, you know, for very long, and because they have uh, things that um, is is needed for our cold climate. Actually, um, I am reminded about a thing because um, earlier this week uh, we presented uh, quite a big uh, news thing in Sweden. Uh, I am doing um, a seeds project uh, together with. Uh, together with um, um, the largest seeds company in Scandinavia, uh, Nelson Garden, uh, and I have um, I have been a part of a project where we are creating um, um, a selection of seeds for winter gardening. I will tell you a lot about that later on. But uh, then I, I happened to see an old seed packet with with the instructions for um, growing tomatoes in Swedish climate, and that was from. Um, 1938, the year 1938, right? And then you were uh, supposed to grow tomatoes in February or April, April, February to April, outdoor in a cold frame. That's what the, the instruction said. So if you want to grow this tomato, you, you sow it in a cold frame in February to April. And you never see that on, a, on an instruction those days, do you? But uh, so yeah, so I am interested in trying to find out a way, see if it's possible. Now I'm going to show you in my polytunnel. I have. I can show you the whole tunnel. See the lights. This is for the children, so we can go out in the evening and have a pee on our bucket. So this is a, you know a water can that is um, made as a. What do you call it? A thing where you sit and pee. <laughs> all right, so I have this table with all of my plants and sowings. This is for mainly for um, the polytunnel, the greens, and I have plenty of flowers as well. So I have pretty much carried out all of it. It's a bit dark now, but yes, you see. <coughs> I'm, I'm I keep my seeds wherever there is a place for it. This is, this is not uh, everything, but um, I'm not very careful, unfortunately. Uh, I sometimes lose, um, lose seeds because I don't uh, take care of them. I keep them where there is um, um, you know, moist in the air <laughs> or damp or whatever, and uh, it's very sunny and everything. But um, otherwise, I would not be able to, to grow my vegetables if I can't just keep them near where I am. Yeah, uh, I have plenty of um, cuttings. I take uh, uh, cuttings from my um, berries. This is Haska berries. I just love huska berries and uh, I love them because they are so easy to take cuttings from. If you have huska berries, you have to try this. I also have uh, um, cuttings from blueberries. It's very difficult, but it's so nice. I have transplanted or planted out um, Chinese cabbages, the small green things. And this year I grow a variety is co uh, called Scarvita and it is with like pink or purple leaves. Let's see if you can see some here. It might be too dark. But this is a small one. And it looks, you know, if you have a five-year-old daughter at home <laughs> who loves princess things and you can actually grow a pink Chinese cabbage. She will just love you. Or he. Um, I wanted to say something because um, I think in, in a few days ago or yesterday we published a video uh, with the English subtitles where I am growing cabbage from seed to harvest. 
and that is so nice, uh, nice project. And I make series now with leek and uh, asparagus and uh, tomatoes, and I will continue doing some other vegetables as well. This is what many people asked for. How do you grow it <laughs> and can we follow through the process? So now we've made a series of the, the cabbage tra uh, translated to English with English subtitles and I hope you appreciate it. And I just want to show you before I go inside taking care of my children how the plants look now. It has been not three weeks, between two or three weeks and they were uh, transplanted in those pots and you will be able to see that video too in just a while. Look here. I would say that uh, cabbage, the brassica family, um, that is basically what I am best uh, growing. I really, really like cabbages and, and yeah, the brassica family. I don't think they are easy to grow, but we sort of connect and uh, this is a variety that is called early jersey wakefield and it's uh, a cabbage with pointed head and if i don't slip over here i can show you an amazing thing with those plants look here you can actually see the cabbage form its head even when the plant is this tiny right so you can see what kind of cabbage this will be. It will be a cabbage with a pointed head. And another one who forms a, you know, a heart, um, something that looks like a ball, <laughs> will have that shape in this early uh, stage. I think it's amazing. I really like the taste of cabbage. But I do think it's a miracle, you know, to, to have those, uh, the small seeds in your hand and they all look the same, they are round and they are dark. Uh, and you can never, you know, see the difference between the seeds. Some of them are bigger and some of them are smaller, but you can never tell really which one it is. And then you, you sow them and in a short while they show up and they are lovely when they uh, germinate as well with the uh, first leaves. And then you transplant them, you care for them, and you uh, fertilize them and everything, and they will turn up as huge plants. I mean, one uh, heart of or head, uh, like red cabbage, it could, um, it could be like five kilos. It's amazing. And I grow the first um, cabbage. I, I sow the cabbage in, um, in January, indoors, and I only sow um, two varieties and I make um, sowings with um, like four or five seeds of each, not, not more than that. So I, I keep them indoors for eight weeks and I then uh, plant out in my polytunnel here in March. And that's very important. Uh, if you plant them later on, uh, it might not um, be able to form a head because they, um, they start to bloom quite early in the heat in the polytunnel. So this is uh, my trick, right? And I can show you the, the Savoy cabbage. Oh no, it's a bit too dark, but I guess you see. So this is <clears throat> Savoy cabbage, Vorobot 3. It's a really nice variety. Ah, I'll have to show you that another day. Um, but that was planted here in, in March from a sowing made in January and I will be harvesting in like two weeks I will harvest the outer leaves and uh, the plants will continue growing and then we uh, harvest um, the cabbage in May. I'm longing for that you know uh, to make a stew with uh, fresh um, Savoy cabbage it's just amazing. Well now I will leave you and have a pee. <laughs> this is how I uh, fertilize all of my plants in this polytunnel. I pee all the time and the kids pee all the time. My husband does not. <laughs> well, he does pee, but not in this. Um, and I, I water the whole area and that's how I fertilize um, the, the soil. I, al I also use uh, the Bokashi compost. 
and uh, like leaves and grass cuttings that I dig down in, in the beds. But this is the best. All right, I wish you all a nice evening or day <laughs> and a nice weekend. And um, well, we'll see each other another time. Bye bye. Hi, City Homestead. See you. You have to watch this um, afterwards. <laughs> bye bye.